What's up everybody, Chris here from Gear America and I'm sitting out here in the desert just outside of Phoenix, Arizona and I wanna to talk to you about WLL versus MBS again. So it's winter, people are out wheeling, having a good time, and inevitably I'm getting tons of questions about, hey, what's WLL, what's MBS? And I know we covered this about a year or two ago, but I wanted to go over it really crystal clear for you one more time. We put WLL and MBS on just about all of our products, and that's workload limit and minimum brake strength. Now, all over the place in this industry, you're gonna see terms like ultimate strength and maximum brake, and those are just fancy terms for MBS, and MBS stands for minimum brake strength. We put all of our gear on giant hydraulic machines and break them. And minimum brake strength means of the test segment they do, like say they test five or 10 shackles, the minimum brake strength is the lowest strength of failure. Minimum brake strength. And the reason we use the lowest point of failure is because we don't want to overrate anything. Now let's take, for example, our Uber shackle. This has a 10 ton workload, which is the WLL, but it has an over 80,000 pound MBS. So when these were put on the big hydraulic machine and broken, I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds of pressure and we destroy these things. When these were put on the machine and broken, the lowest break point on these things was over 80,000 pounds. So where do we come up with the 10 ton workload limit? Well, I'm gonna explain that to you. In the rigging industry, the steel products that you see here like snatch blocks and shackles are all covered by what's called a safety factor. Now a safety factor is the difference between where it breaks and what they consider a good safe limit for using it. A shackle like this one has a four to one safety factor. So you take your 80,000 pounds, you divide it by four, and that's your workload limit. The workload limit is what is deemed to be the safe working load. Because you know for darn well, if you stay at one quarter the strength of this thing, you're not gonna break it. So we have a 10 ton workload limit. So that's 20,000 pounds. That covers that four to one ratio of 80,000 pounds to 20,000 pounds. Now let's look at another example. Here we have our mega shackle. This is our eight ton shackle and it has like a 68,000 pound MBS or minimum brake strength. So we take that and we go four to one, divide it by four, and that's why we come up with an eight ton or a 16,000 pound conservatively rated workload limit on this shackle. Now let's talk about snatch blocks. They're a little bit different. They have a two to one safety factor. So your MBS is gonna be twice what your workload limit is. So let's take a look at our mega snatch block. This is our super ultra beefy mega snatch block. Now this one has a 25,000 pound workload and a 25 ton MBS. So at 25 tons, 50,000 pounds was our minimum brake strength on this. You do the two to one safety factor, 50,000 pounds is the MBS and 25,000 pounds is our workload limit on this one. Hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't, you can feel free to shoot me a message, drop me an email at chris at gearamerica.com or anything like that, I'll give you further explanations. Now you're gonna find things like winches with steel cables also have a safety factor. Pretty much anything that's used in the industrial rigging industry is gonna have a safety factor where you get that MBS, minimum brake strength, and WLL workload limit. Now for our soft goods, like our toe straps, kinetic robes, and soft shackles, it's a little bit different. We always put braking strength on those. So let's take, for example, our half inch soft shackle. This has a 45,000 pound capacity. That's gonna be basically our MBS on it, our minimum brake strength. We put several of these on our giant hydraulic machine and 45,000 pounds is what we came up with for strength on our soft shackles. Now there's no workload limit or MBS on it. It is just a 45,000 pound strength on this bad boy. Same thing with the kinetic rope. Our 7 8 kinetic ropes, which are available in blue, orange, and gray. These guys have a 28,500 pound braking capacity. Now, kinetic rope is a little bit different than like a steel shackle or snatch block because it has a little bit of give. So we put these on the machine, we stretch them out all the way and we just pull it until they fail. And that's the 28,500 pound capacity on those. Same thing goes for our toe straps. We've got the three inch and we've got the four inch in many different lengths. The three inch ones are rated at over 30,000 pounds. The four inch ones are rated at over 40,000 pounds. Those are gonna be brake strengths on those. But on all the steel goods, on the back of the box, or right on the description on the website, you're going to see WLL and MBS. So this is to alleviate the confusion on that. WLL, workload limit. That's your safe limit for working. If you've got a 10-ton shackle, you got 20,000 pounds of pulling power on this thing. Now, I don't know about you, but my Jeep weighs about 4,300 pounds. I don't think I'm ever going to break one of these with my Jeep. Snatch blocks two to one safety factor. It's a 25 ton braking strength, but a 25,000 pound workload limit on it. 
I run a 13,000 pound winch on the front of the Jeep. I don't think I'm ever gonna hit 25,000 pounds on this bad boy. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit of WLL versus MBS. Now I know I'm still gonna get questions and I can provide more clarification if needed, but I figured this would be as clear as mud for all you guys that are asking the questions right now. MBS, minimum brake strength. Also terms used in the industry, ultimate strength, maximum brake, minimum failure point. So there's a lot of terms they use, but we try to keep it simple with MBS WLL. When you're looking at recovery equipment and it says ultimate failure point, check to see if there's a workload limit. A lot of people advertise their minimum brake strength as the strength of the equipment. Now, like I said, for our soft shackles, our kinetic ropes, our straps, that is the way we describe them. That's your braking strength because it's a soft good. It's not a steel rigging implement. But if you jump online and you see a shackle saying, hey, this is an 80,000 pound shackle, I pretty much guarantee you that's gonna be the minimum brake strength, not the workload limit. So you can cut that in a four to one ratio and that's your workload limit. I'll be the first to admit, that I use and abuse stuff. That's part of my job. Go out and break gear. That's what I do. So I'm pushing everything to the limit that I can, but unfortunately with a 43, 4,500 pound Jeep or even my 6,000 pound three quarter ton truck, I don't have enough to break things like the 80,000 pound minimum brake strength Uber shackle. That's what the giant hydraulic machine is for. But here at Gear America, we want to overbuild everything. We do make eight ton shackles. We do make 10 ton shackles. We make 40,000 plus capacity toe straps, 28,500 pound kinetic ropes, and 45,000 pound soft shackles. And we do that for a reason, because we know people are going out in rigs that are somewhere between 3,000 and 7,000 pounds, and we wanna be 100% sure that they're gonna be recovered in a safe manner without failure of parts. That's why we also offer a lifetime warranty on everything that we sell because we stand behind everything and we're super confident that it's gonna take good care of you in any recovery situation. Now you've seen some of my other videos where we show the correct usage of a lot of this equipment. Now I do understand that sometimes you have an emergency and you have to think outside the box and get creative on the way you recover somebody. And that's another reason why we overbuild everything. Now, like I said, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of this, feel free to drop me a comment below or shoot me an email at chris at gearamerica.com and I'll get back to you. So hopefully this cleared up a little bit of the mystery of WLL versus MBS again. And if there's ever anything you want to see in a video to be clearly explained, let me know. I got you. So thanks for tuning in and thanks for being a part of the Gear America Nation. And remember, Gear America, stronger, safer, covered by a lifetime warranty, we're here for you. Hey, we've got a lot of cool things coming up from Gear America this year. So do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and ring that bell. That way you will be the first one to know every time we come out with new gear, a fun run, an install, anything like that. But for now, this is Chris signing off from the desert just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And as always, off-road smart and tread lightly.